Good afternoon from 107.8 Black Diamond FM. Mark Mulgrew. Yeah, man. We're going to bring you a little bit of uh, Caribbean and South American reggae. We're called Cool Vibration. We're going to play you reggae, Ritz, Antigua style. So we haven't had a sound check, so here we go. This is a Bob Marley number just to get going. See you. 
the sounds of cool vibration recorded live at the Caledonian Brewery in Edinburgh which takes me nicely to speaking to my guest Ash Gupta Hi Mark Good afternoon Yeah it's good to be here That that was great stuff (laughs) I've left a trail of rice so I can get back (laughs) (laughs) Ah Ash Gupta the the man the man when it comes to reggae music in uh, in Edinburgh and, and beyond yeah, reggae's been uh, a great uh, inspiration to me. Reggae and ska, going right back to the roots and the old Trojan records, and uh, these are just wonderful things. And one of the best things that happened last summer was actually meeting Toots. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was so nice to hang, hang with him when he came over to the Liquid Rooms. And uh, he said that we should record together. So there's a, a song that we do, which maybe we'll play later on here, uh, which is based on Monkey Man, and he'd heard about it. So Flash Gordon, his tour manager, called me up, and uh, and he's going to get a present for me, which I'll tell you about later. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, we've got we've got loads of stuff that we're going to talk about to the middle of the listeners today. Now, it didn't all start with uh, reggae for you, Ash. Tell us about about where it all started for you. No, I started off uh, playing, uh, would you believe, guitar at boarding school, and so in the early '60s, that was the shadows. That was the sound of Hank Mar- Marvin, and funnily enough. Jet Harris and Diamonds, uh-huh. okay? And uh, this, those lovely twanging Fender guitars went into your head and they just inspired you. So, of course, the first band uh, was uh, somebody called the Phantom Five. Uh, it was a kind of Shadows tribute band, but before long, uh, that became a bit naff. And I joined a rhythm and blues band. I was getting into trouble. Um, and my mum decided if I joined a band, I might get... Uh, that might get me off the streets. So um, I joined this band, rhythm and blues band called The Images. Mm-hmm. Very classic, you know, uh, playing all the R&B hits. By that time, it was rock and roll was a little naff. Soul hadn't arrived. And so we're playing real rhythm and blues. A bit like the sort of the Mersey beat music and, you know, Louis Louis yeah. R&B style, stuff like that. And at that time, there were wonderful clubs. You could... It was a proliferation of clubs and venues to play in, a proliferation of fantastic bands, and you had so many people to inspire you. There's a band called The Embers with, you know, almost as good as the Rolling Stones, or Edinburgh's Rolling Stones, and you used to go and see them and think, I want to do that. And that's where the images sort of came, because we um, got a residency in a place called the Gamp Club, which was the, one of the hottest clubs in town, very competitive with a place across the road. And that was great, and you met people who are still friends today, you know, guys like bands like Screaming Citizens, the Avengers, the Athenians, and they were all so good. I mean, Edinburgh really didn't have a chance to do what um, Manchester and Liverpool did, and London's always done, but actually it was there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of our older listeners will remember the images, and uh, you were having a, just a, a small sort of a, a comment on, on the Facebook post last night uh, about some of the, some of the bands and, and some of the venues that were... Uh, in Edinburgh and the Lothians, you know, it, it was a very thriving scene at the time. Yeah, I mean, we used to do nine gigs a week, but the trouble is you never saw the other bands. You were talking about this earlier. Um, what we had to do was get to this place called the Oasis by five to three in the morning to get the last order opposite to Ficken Street Police Station. And you'd see all the other bands, vans there, so you knew who was in, you know, the Moonrakers with lipstick all over it and, the, you know, uh, Pathfinders and so on. And then you'd go in and you knew each other, but you hardly ever saw each other on stage. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that off air, and I've, I've spoken to various guests on the show. You know, you just never get a chance to see people perform, and yeah. it, it's always a pleasure to to go along and see somebody perform, and and also perform with uh, your fellow artists as well. You yes. know, when there's jamming sessions and stuff. That's right. Well, then, then things went really well with the images, maybe too well. We were doing nine gigs a week, mm -hmm. and I was at university, and um, I was a Saturday boy in a mod shop called Berry's. And this dude came in and said he wanted 36 pairs of size 36 underpants. So, and no boxes. So I was putting them in the brown paper bag and I said, that's a lot of pants. And he said, well, not for me, it's for my uh, boss. I'm just his driver. And I said, well, who are you driving for? And it's a guy called, a famous actor called Lawrence Harvey. And he was up here for the festival. And uh, they'd taken a big house. Um, his girlfriend was a very famous model, a very beautiful model called um, Pauline Stone. And they, they were looking for an R&B band. He said, do you know an R&B band? I said, well, I've got one. And they said, look, you won't get paid, but there's lots of good guys from London. Um, come and play for us. So we went. And it was Jane Asher's 21st birthday party. She was Paul McCartney's girlfriend at the time. And we walked in. We were all about 16. And our jaws just dropped. We'd never seen women as beautiful as that, food so much as that, and guys that we'd seen on TV. Anyway, we played our first set. We were a bit quiet. And then um, this guy came over, and he had the uh, Jim Dale. He had the TV show on independent TV. And he said, you guys are really good. Um, what label do you record with? And we said, listen, the only label we have here is Robertson's Jam. He said, <laughs> you should have a label. You'll have one by Monday. And we thought, yeah, that would be right. And you know what we did? We got a recording contract. And that, that caused the prob one of the biggest problems in my life. I had to choose between going on the road with a recording contract in a band that mm -hmm. I loved. Yeah. There were my brothers. We played nine gigs a week. And we didn't have time for girlfriends or anything. It was just the band and work, which was university. Yeah. Um, and my sisters took me aside. And my dad had died when I was five. And she said, Papa would have liked you to finish your degree. But you choose. And I th you know, the... Uh, a sort of bit, bit inside me thought, I bet I better do it. So uh, I left the band. <laughs> ah, it, 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 I suppose it's a dilemma situation, you know. And it, as you said, you know, you, you always look back on on what you've done and what you've not did, yeah. and uh, you know, you, it's a regret for you. However, things have moved on. Absolutely. The thing is, um, I I was doing architecture, and the lovely freckly blonde girl that everyone fancied became my wife, and she was sort of um, upper middle class from Thornton Cleveland's and thought playing the guitar was a bit naff. So in deference to her, because I loved her, I stopped playing for seven of the ten years we married. When we got separated, because I was working at Ford, I got bored. So I went down and lonely. So I went down to local wine bar in Brentwood, because I'd left Edinburgh by that time working for Ford. And I said, could you do with a guitar player on a quiet night like a Monday? He said, oh, yeah. And then my boss walked in from Ford and said, oh, I didn't know you could play the guitar. I thought you were boring. And so I thought, shit, all those years I haven't played the guitar. Yeah. So right, I, we're going to play a track. I'm going to play a, a little Johnny Cash cover of a U2 song. And then we're going to come back. We're going to play another one of your tracks. And we're going to talk more about your reggae career and about a certain guitar. <laughs> Is it getting better? Or do you feel 